politicians bounce carbon policy around with agonising slowness. There's a growing and receptive business audience who are already planning for that low carbon future. Medium to large sized companies now have to comply with the National Greenhouse and Energy Reporting Act, or ENGIA, which requires them to account for greenhouse emissions. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome If actually we want to um, prosper in a world that's moving to low carbon and low greenhouse, we need to rapidly reduce emissions, independent of our moral value or environmental value of protecting polar bears, it's actually in our economic interest to do so. As businesses prepare for a low carbon future, they're finding big money saving opportunities and they're driving new service industries. Carbon Systems has developed a technology platform to help corporations and organisations of all size measure their energy and their carbon emissions um, on a regular basis. You know, everybody's looking for, uh, for, for ways to save money. Legislation drives change, but industry is driven by profit. Like dinosaurs, those that can't adapt, die. A classic example is the almost organic story of GM and Toyota the biology of two companies responding in different ways to a changing environment. While General Motors built the Hummer in the 1990s, Toyota developed the Prius. Way too late GM responded, but they couldn't evolve fast enough. In 2008 they tried to go green with this, the Chevy Tahoe SUV Hybrid, a 5.3 litre V8, supplemented by a tiny battery. Did the market respond to this lukewarm effort? You bet. General Motors is suffering massive consumer turnoff. From January to August 2009, General Motors had sold 11,544 hybrids in the US. While during that same period, Toyota sold 119,306. The dinosaurs are dying. Faster, innovative companies rule. Roger Allen runs one of the most successful venture capital companies in Australia. He invests in good ideas. So is he gloomy about Australia's future low carbon economy? Far from it. I absolutely think there's going to be a boom in sort of, you know, green jobs. I think, th and, and, you know, the stories that are going on about industries, you know, collapsing or huge unemployment, I think it's just complete scaremongering. You know, it's just vested interests carrying on. We've seen it, you know, the analogy I use is, if you, if you remember copper, people always said, 14,000 uh, bits per second was about it. You never get through copper. Then it went up to 28. I remember then 56 was absolutely the maximum. Um, and now look what we get through copper. And that's because fibre came along and copper was a sunk investment and people started to focus on how do we get more throughput over copper. So I th I'm a great believer that there's going to be a, a huge boom in, in uh, not just new technologies that people are thinking about new green and clean tech technologies, but actually applying a lot of science and a lot of uh, research and development on, on, on current ways of doing things and just making that a lot more efficient. And so to Carl, we're addicted to it. It's making us bloated and carbon obese. I think the age of coal is over, but it'll be replaced by wonderful new technologies. Many of them are already here, but many we can't even imagine. Those new clean technologies will generate plenty of jobs. There's money to be made in green technology. Here's a good example. When he went back to China, UNSW graduate Dr. Xi Zhengrong started producing solar cells using technology he helped to develop at UNSW. He's now one of the richest men in China, worth an estimated $3 billion. I think we live in exciting times. We only touched on just a, a few of the opportunities in the new clean industrial revolution. Going carbon light, I think, is going to make Australia one of the wealthiest countries in the world. And it's going to be a wonderful ride.